big and small are in the Pacific Northwest, specifically Oregon. We visited Crater Lake, Tumalo Falls, and Smith Rock. Crater Lake is also the deepest lake in the United States. We made it to Crater Lake. Lake. Today it was a super clear day as you can see. You can see the lake very clearly. We recommend at least a couple days for this Oregon road trip. Tumalo Falls. And we're at the falls. This is big. And small travel. We're in... Crater Lake. Oregon. Before visiting Crater Lake, we stayed in Ashland. It's just 90 minutes south of the National Park. What did you find? Lunch boxes. We're walking around downtown Ashland. This is the home of the Shakespeare Festival. There's a lot of drama stuff here, including the Ashland Film Festival is happening right now. So in Ashland, it's all about the Shakespeare Festival. The Shakespeare Festival is so renowned in costumes they have here many pieces often rented around the world for different productions that's how important and wide scale it is here this is our hotel for the night in ashland it's the best western it's not the best value let's be honest but it's near the downtown so here we are on the way to crater lake on the way to crater we have to start our day getting coffee before we go to Crater Lake. We're at we just got some coffee at dinner, and they were nice enough to just give it to us for free. For free. They also look like they have really good food, but we can't comment on that. We didn't eat, we're just getting coffee. Another coffee. It is National Park Day. National Park Day means April 17th that the parks are free. We're not going to beat the rush. We're going after the rush. We're going later in the day because we took that earlier point of the day to investigate and explore Ashland. We're about 30 miles on the 62 going to Crater Lake, uh, surrounded by forest. Crater Lake has a lot of stories about it. We'll recount some of the more interesting ones coming up. Almost there, we made a little pit stop. Okay, it's mid-April, and as Big said, it is National Park Week. This is the first day, so they have free entrances. But we're here getting in probably around 4 p.m. After the rush. Yeah, we're probably about 15 miles away, so we'll see how it looks as we approach. Look at those embankments. Okay, we're approaching the entrance and normally it is $20. And as we keep saying today, it should be free. We are approaching, we are inside the park. We are in the crater almost. Three miles. These packed snow walls are big. This is the, the Rim Village Visitor Center and there's a cafe and gift shop here. Hey big. I think it's pretty tall and I'm big. And look at these embankments. Maybe like 10 feet high. 
So it's mid-April and a lot of this has been plowed already and of course this is different every year but sometimes it's snowy up here till June. Small said this might be about 10 feet. I'm 6'2". What do you think? Is it 10 feet? So from the gift shop you can go around and you'll get to the lodge here. Of course right now it's all closed up but you can walk around it and get a view of the lake. And that's our first view, so we're gonna see where else we can get some good views at this time of the year. We finally made it to Crater Lake. Crater Lake formed 7,700 years ago. That's when a volcano collapsed onto itself. The volcano collapsed, and what is left is this island behind me, Wizard Island. Crater Lake is also the deepest lake in the United States. So we're very lucky today. It was a super clear day, as you can see. You can see the lake very clearly. Actually, around this time of the year, there's only a 30% chance that you'll see the lake. We actually just ran into someone who said he's been here five times and this is the first time he's actually seen it. So usually there's, I guess, fog and you can't even see the lake. So. Be sure to check the weather before you come to make sure it's worth it. But if you see the blues, they're majestic. They remind me of Lake Tahoe, except we've, we've paddle boarded in Lake Tahoe. We've not paddle boarded here, and I don't think we will. I don't think I've ever seen anyone paddle board here. One of our favorite stories about Crater Lake involves the old man. Well, the old man is a large tree stump that's been bobbing vertically in the lake since at least 1896 when Joseph Diller first discovered it. It's said that the old man can travel miles in a single day. In the 1980s, scientists decided to tie the tree to the shore, but shortly after tying up the old man, a huge storm rolled in, causing it to snow in August. Thinking it was more than a coincidence, they quickly untied the old man and the snow subsided. We didn't see the old man, but if you make it out to Crater Lake, you'll definitely want to keep a lookout for this mysterious lake dweller known as the old man. We're here in mid-April in Crater Lake, and they say, the temperature says it's 51 degrees Fahrenheit. But as you see all the snow still around us, very intense sunshine. The sunlight feels quite strong. I mean, we could be out here in shorts right now. It feels great. I can't imagine it during the summer. I don't think you get this much snow though. So a lot of people will reference some guy who discovered Crater Lake in the 1800s, but there was very likely some local tribes here that may have actually saw the events happen. Uh, they, the things that they have in their oral traditions kind of line up with ge what geologists have discovered about the possible eruption, or the actual eruption, 7,700 years ago. So it's a likelihood that they actually saw it happen. And that's all I have to say. Mind the rules. Sometimes we get a little overexcited. We went a little bit beyond, but respect the rules here in the national parks. It's a treasure to be here and have them preserved. There are thin layers of snow called cornices that can build around the edge of the rim of the lake and break easily under a person's weight. We left Crater Lake for Bend, Oregon. Bend is in central Oregon and Tumalo Falls is west of Bend. This is the hike on the way to the Tumalo Falls. This is a really nice uh, hike, uh, the mountain pass here. We hiked about a couple miles from where the road was closed. So in the winter time, as you can see, the road is filled with snow. So you have to walk about two and a half miles to get to the waterfalls. We're at the creek point now, so I think the falls are right up there. Tumalo! This hike is really cool. 
It's easy, it's a gradual incline up to the falls, and it only took us about, I'd say a little less than an hour. And we're at the falls, and we're here in early April, snow on the ground, roads closed, still a wonderful time. Snow! Now we're hiking around the falls to get behind it. This is what we hiked up. As you can see, this is the path. This is muddy. We're going up with boots. We recommend hiking boots. So once you cross over the creek, you'll see a great view of the waterfalls, as you just saw. And then you have to go up about a quarter mile and it's pretty steep, but it doesn't take too long. We're gonna see the top of the falls. Tumalo Falls. We based ourselves in Bend, a mountain town in central Oregon. It's a good base to be near Smith Rock and of course near Tumalo. We have arrived to Smith Rock, the last part of our video. Small, you're in the sun. We've actually been here before. There's some trails. It's about 5.30, so it's a little late. We're gonna see how far we can get. Smith Rock in 1986 became the birthplace of sport climbing in the U.S. Being that it is the birthplace of modern American sport climbing, expect people doing traditional climbing, multi-pitch climbing, and bouldering. That's where we're going up. So going up to Smith Rock, we're going up the Misery Trail right now. It's a straight hike up. At least you're not climbing the rock face like you saw earlier. But expect to get your heart rate up fast. Very slippery going down. And even going up. Oh. We're about halfway. The Misery Ridge Loop is actually four miles. These are some of the mountain peaks of Central Oregon, including the Sisters. When you're in Smith Rock, Monkey Face is a 350-foot spire that is the centerpiece of Smith Rock. When viewed from the south, the top of the pillar resembles the face of a monkey, complete with a mouth, nose, and eyes. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell to get all of our updates. Do it. Also, let us know if you need any recommendations or have any suggestions of what to see in Oregon. Ciao. 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 Ciao.